So I'm thrilled to be back for this segment of, uh, of our program this morning to uh, talk with you a little bit about uh, what we're up to with, uh, with Iris Data Platform, what we're building and why. And what I'm hoping to do is uh, set the stage, frankly, for the next segment where we're gonna actually show you some use cases that are running with uh, technology that we've delivered earlier this year. So far in the conference, of course, we've talked a lot about AI and the possibility, and we know that it's transformative. And, uh, but we certainly don't know all of the outcomes. I, I kind of liken it to uh, in 1994 or whatever, I sent my first email and like, wow, the internet's cool uh, and it's transformative. Uh, but little did I realize that I would have Wi-Fi connected light bulbs in my house that change colors, right? Did you imagine that? Uh, so we're at the beginning and certainly there is a lot of hype. And, and I, uh, the Gartner Hype Cycle, uh, it was published uh, recently, uh, that showed large language models and generative AI at the very peak of that hype cycle. But what was more interesting uh, than just that, because I think we all kind of knew it, uh, is that it debuted at the peak of the hype cycle. So we're seeing transformation that is, that is mind-blowing, but it's also happening at a pace that is unprecedented. It's showing up early and, uh, and there's a lot of opportunity. And so through all of that, of course, it's really uh, easy to get a little bit distracted. And so I was really happy uh, to have Merv join us today with a, a data-driven kind of survey from data management professionals who are experiencing all of this. And kind of coming out of that data, that advice, which I think, I think it's certainly uh, very valid. And, and it is happening, but it's not too late to participate. You know, we, we, uh, every time we turn on the TV, uh, news reports, business reports, whatever, e everything is about AI and AI hardware and you know, chat GPT and all of, the, all of the challenges around it. It's interesting and it's happening, but it certainly is not too late. De-risking your strategy is really important, and, and we really take this to heart, and it's why we've doubled down on the things that we're building, because we know we're already managing a lot of data for you and with our platforms, and to the extent that we can create the extensions that are required so that you can get that next transformation done, uh, we want to be there and be able to do it. Uh, we're all experiencing the challenge of, of getting AI skills, and, and uh, certainly I think this is really great advice, and we're seeing that our peers in the industry uh, are doing the same. And so there are a lot of opportunities for learning and retreading uh, and building, and that's easier if you're able to build that on your existing data management foundation and infrastructure, because you're not throwing everything out and starting over, but in fact, you're kind of building on that solid foundation uh, of what you've got. And of course, uh, trust and compliance are a big deal. And, and the one thing that I wanted to take away from this is uh, not only that it's there and it's happening, and it's happening in real time, and we, again, just like we don't know all of the eventual uh, uh, changes that AI and generative AI will bring for us, we certainly uh, don't understand even now what the regulation next month, next quarter, next year might be. So thinking about the infrastructure that you're building and the applications that you're building and deploying, certainly there is the policy and ethics uh, perspective, but also thinking about that technology infrastructure and designing from day one the ability to implement any new ethics compliance or regulatory uh, uh, requirements will be important so that you don't have to, again, start over uh, midstream. And of course, I like, uh, I like that, uh, of course we rehearsed this, I like that Merv said get started uh, because uh, we, we all want to get started uh, because we're gonna learn along the way and uh, getting started and building out the foundation so that we can be agile and deliver new applications is critical. So setting the stage uh, and thinking about um, how we're investing in IRIS and investing in hopefully building out uh, technology that's useful for you, I'd like to actually uh, take a look back and set the stage. 
In 2019, we launched, uh, we launched Iris, and the whole design criteria behind it was that we be intuitive, reliable, interoperable, and scalable. And when you think about data-centric, business-critical applications, these core concepts are really important to get right. And we have, uh, I think, built a solid foundation uh, for that. But since that original launch, we've actually extended the breadth and depth of our technology and the breadth and depth of our capabilities along each of those areas. And in fact, we've expanded uh, in a couple of areas. First, we've expanded in what we can do with your data. And that's anywhere from native analytics, integrated machine learning, machine learning and Python capabilities kind of are the foundation for a lot of AI-based algorithms native Python support, and advanced high availability options. So we have more opportunities, more feature, more functionality. We really expanded what we can do with the technology. We've also expanded for you how well we can do it. And this shows up in better performance. And performance is always interesting because it's a level of efficiency, improved costs. You can do more with less, or you can do more with more. Uh, and we continue to focus on speed, scale, and security. And over the, the time from 2019's original launch to today, we've added about 30 to 50% speed up for uh, things uh, commonly, common, commonly executed algorithms. We've also enhanced our, our uh, compression and storage options to give you more flexibility and the ability to store and consume a lot more data when you need it. We've expanded where we can do it, on-prem, in the cloud, as embedded containers, as a hybrid architecture, and anywhere in between. And you'll see us continue to show up with more ways to consume the technology to make it easy to integrate into your applications and easy to get started. We've also uh, expanded how you can actually consume this technology. Uh, so, so, you know, in simpler times, you, you would uh, get a DVD and you would install the software and you would go. Certainly, there are a lot more touch points uh, today, and you can, you can consume it as elastic containers, as microservices, or as a set of fully integrated and managed services. So all of these capabilities and the reason we've made this investment uh, has been to really help position ourselves to enable your next generation data architecture. A lot of folks in the market are talking about data fabrics and data meshes, and we think that that kind of an architecture really supports a lot of innovation. And the investments that we've made in, in the expansion of the breadth and depth of IRIS is, have really positioned us as a leader in that space. And some of the key value proposition around uh, data fabric is that, of course, you can connect or collect lots of data that you don't want to be constrained by any kind of data. You don't want just transactions or documents, but you want transactions, documents, images, and everything in between. You want to be able to have any kind of analytic run against that data, and you want to be able to move the analytic to the data and not have to move data to an analytic. So all of those capabilities, we think, really create a lot of opportunity for agile adoption of, of data-centric applications and very quick time to value. And so that's how we've been investing in IRIS up to date. 